with a reasonable answer for the hope that lies within us, this is Contending for the Faith with Dr. Jerry Buckner. We would invite you to join us for the next hour at 888-F-O-R-K-F-A-X. That's 888-367-5329. And now, to introduce Dr. Jerry Buckner, here's Gary Bell. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Contending for the Faith. We're the cutting edge Christian apologetic ministry addressing the issues and the challenges facing today's church. And we are live, live for the next hour with your host, Bay Area pastor, lecturer, counselor, and expert on the cults, Dr. Jerry L. Buckner. I am Gary Bell. And once again, our phone lines are open. We do want to hear from you. That number is 1-888-F-O-R-K-F-A-X. That's one 367 5329 Don't be shy. Pick up that phone and give us a call. We want to know what's on your mind. Again, the number is one 888 F-O-R-K-F-A-X. Well, when it comes to spiritual warfare, how does the book of Ephesians tell us to walk? And what are the these unique walking steps to victory in spiritual warfare? Well, for the answer to these questions and much, much more, stay tuned for we are not pretending. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you guessed it. We are contending for the faith. Dr. Buckner, how are you? Brother Gary, I'm truly blessed and the Lord and just just thank the Lord for the privilege and opportunity to be here in the studio again to just minister to God's people in the name of Jesus. And thank you so much for that awesome introduction. And thank you all for joining us for another edition of Contending for the Faith. I'm your host, Dr. Jerry L. Buckner, and we know you're going to be blessed in the Lord tonight. Well, as Brother Gary has said, we are going to be talking about uh, spiritual warfare and talk about it in relationship to the walk of the Christian. And it is interesting to me that when I have done a study of the entire book of Ephesians, it is amazing and awesome and powerful how the Apostle Paul has said over and over again by the power of the Holy Spirit about the Christian walk. And I want to talk to you tonight about eight areas of the Christian walk when it comes to leading up to spiritual warfare. So we want you to get your pens and papers and your Bible and get these points down. And we want to share it with you tonight. So get your Bible because this is not about Buckner. This is about the Bible. So we want to call your attention to uh, Ephesians chapter two and verse two. And notice how many times in the Bible that the word walk is used. It's used over and over and over again because the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul is trying to emphasize that we got to walk right. We got to walk in the Spirit, walk in the way that God has called us to walk. We are to walk the way God has commanded us to walk, and we need to be obedient in that walk. So the the first uh, principle of this walk with God is uh, laid out in Ephesians uh, 2 and verse 2. And it tells us there in Ephesians 2 and verse 2, uh, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So what the apostle Paul is saying through the power of the Holy Spirit is that we are to walk not as we used to do in the past. We are to be different. We are to be the salt and light in this dark world, this decaying world. We are to be the salt and light. So we are not to walk like the way we used to do in the past. So the first thing that he challenges us as Christians is that we must not walk the way we used to walk in the past. Notice that word walk there. And then the second thing that he talks about in relationship to the Christian walk is found in Ephesians chapter uh, 4. And look at Ephesians chapter 4 and look at verse 1. It says there in Ephesians 4 and verse 1, uh, Therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you 
walk, notice the word again, walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. So he's telling us to walk worthy. There is a lot of Christians today in our churches that are not walking worthy. They are walking unworthy. And that's one of the reasons why they can't be blessed of the Lord, but because they're walking unworthy. The third word that he uses in Ephesians regarding the walk of the Christian is found in Ephesians 4 and verse 17. In Ephesians 4 and verse uh, 17, the third walk of the Christian, and he talks about here is that, uh, that we are not to walk as the world or mankind. But uh, he says here, uh, this I say, therefore, testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk. Notice the word there again. Walk not as other Gentiles walk in vanity of their mind. So he's telling us now to not walk as the world. And the world and the culture by which we live today is trying to tell us that abortion is okay trying to tell us that fornication is okay and adultery is okay and the uh, marrying of uh, two men and two women is okay and these things are an abomination. It's against the word of God and to walk in the way of drugs and alcohol abuse and all of this madness today, murdering and on and on and on. The list goes according to the flesh. So... He's telling us to walk not as the world, as the world walks. And then the fourth way that he tells us to walk is found in Ephesians 5 and verse 2. Ephesians 5 and verse 2. Notice he says, and I'm going to start off with verse one, be ye therefore followers of God and dear as dear children. Notice verse two and walk in love. Notice that and walk in love. A lot of us are walking in bitterness. A lot of us are walking in hate. A lot of us are walking in rebellion. A lot of us are walking in stubbornness. A lot of us are walking the way of Satan, the world and the flesh, but he tells us to walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God as a sweet smelling savor. So we are to walk in that love in our marriage, to walk in that way in our in love in the church and walk in that love on our jobs, to work, work and walk in that love everywhere we go. That's what God is calling upon us to do. So the fifth uh, way to walk is found in Ephesians 5 and verse um, uh, 8. I want you to notice that there. It tells us there, and here's the word walk again. For ye were sometimes in darkness, but now are ye light of the Lord. Walk, notice, walk as children of the light. We're not to walk in the darkness, but to walk in the light. And we got so many Christians and non-Christians walking in darkness. And Jesus said to let your light so shine before man that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. So we are to walk in the light. Notice all of these words related to the walk of the Christian. And the sixth way to walk is found in Ephesians 5 and verse 15. And he's telling us here and see then that you walk uh, circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. So he's telling us here, uh, sixthly, to walk in wisdom. Oh, we have so many biblically illiterate Christians today, ignorant of the word of God. It's not bad being ignorant. It's only bad when you want to stay ignorant. So we are to walk in wisdom, not in foolishness, but to walk in wisdom. To walk in wisdom is to know the word of God and to apply it to your life daily. Walking in wisdom. 
And it's amazing how many Christians and churches just are ignorant of the word of God. It's amazing how many ministers are ignorant of the word of God. And he's telling us to walk in wisdom. That's what he's telling us to do. And then, seventhly, this dovetails off of this point here, even though it doesn't use the word walk, it's coming behind wisdom, which the Holy Spirit is the one that brings wisdom. So in Ephesians 5 and 18, we are to walk in the Spirit. And he says, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. This follows behind all the other walks. Because in order for you to walk rightly and biblically is to walk in the power of the Spirit. And the Spirit wants to give you the exousia, which is the Greek word for authority found in John 1 and 12, and also the dunamis, which is found in Acts 1 and 8. So God wants you to walk in the power of the Spirit. When you get saved, when you got saved, you were indwelled with the Spirit. And when you become a Christian, every day you are to be infilled by the Spirit. And the problem why so many Christians are not infilled by the Spirit is because we are leaky vessels and we have to stay under the fountain at all times in order to receive a fresh anointing, a fresh supply of God's power. And so many of people are praying for God to fill them, Christians, when they're already filled with something else. And as the white Lyman Moody once said in the book, Secret Powers, there must be an emptying in order for there to be a filling. And a lot of us got too much of the flesh in the world and our uh, Satan uh, driving us and leading us that we don't have room for the Holy Spirit. We've grieved him. And that's what Paul says also in Ephesians 4 and 30, grieve not uh, the spirit. And so we grieve him. Therefore, we lose the power of God working in our lives. And so, um, eighth and lastly, uh, of course, we would be amiss to miss out on saying this in summary. This is the summation of everything that I'm saying here is that Paul builds upon all of this to bring the grand finale to bring the fireworks. And, and that is in Ephesians chapter six, we are to walk in the armor of God. We are to walk in all the six pieces of the armor of God in our lives. So if you're not equipped, you will get whipped. We have so many Christians walking around living defeated lives because they're not walking in the armor of God. There are six pieces of the armor. And before you start off walking in anything else in the day, you must start off walking in the armor of God and know it. Get into meditation, which brings memorization of God's word. You got to put on this armor every day and you will become invincible in the invisible warfare. But if you don't start the day off and have your Bible open and go immediately to Ephesians 6 and then say all the six pieces by faith and by trust, you put it on. If you don't do that, you will become a doom casualty. You will get whipped because you haven't been equipped. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to you tonight because he's trying to speak to you regarding the Christian walk. The Christian walk must not be a foolish walk. It must not be a selfish walk. It must not be in the flesh. It must be a walk in the power of the Spirit of God with the armor on. And watch the power of God be unleashed in your life. And watch the way people get drawn to the word of God and to prayer and to Jesus Christ. So my challenge to you tonight, if you haven't walked in all of these eight pieces of God's truth, then my challenge to you tonight is that you repent 
You turn from your sin, you turn from something to something. That's what the Greek word for repentance means, is montanoye, and it means an about face. It's a military word. It means to turn from something to something. And God is challenging you tonight to come and walk with him in all these areas that Paul, the Apostle Paul, is laying out. Look at this, the verses of Scripture. Go over it. And with each walk, say, God, help me to walk in all of these walks of God's spirit. And he will bless you. And he will use you as a blessing to others. He that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches. Brother Gary. It's a walk. It's not a sit. It's a walk. It's not a crawl. It's a walk. It's not laying down. So many believers have gotten saved and just sat down. You got to get on your walk, saints of God. It's time to walk. It's time to move forward. Our toll free number is 1 888 F O R K F A X. That's 1 888 367 5329. Walk over to that phone and give us a call. Again, that number is 1 888 F O R K F A X. We are going to be right back with more of Contending for the Faith after these important messages. listening to Contending for the Faith on AM 1100 KFAX, the spirit of the bay. If you have questions about your faith in Christ, theology, doctrine, or the cults, call us now, 888-FOR-KFAX. That's 888-367-5329. Welcome back to Contending for the Faith with your host, Bay Area Pastor, Lecture Counselor, and Expert on the Cults, Dr. Jerry L. Buckner. I'm Gary Bell. Once again, our phone lines are open, and we want to hear from you tonight. That number is 1 888 F O R K F A X. That's 1 888 367 5329. We got Jarrell on the engineering side tonight. Boy, he's excited. Look at him go. <laughs> I have never seen anybody work those knobs like he does. <laughs> <laughs> but we're excited to be here tonight, and we're more excited to even know that you're going to give us a call. That number is one eight 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 F O R K F A X. We want to thank all of you who have been praying for contending for the faith this week, and we really appreciate the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous. If we, if it weren't for those prayers, we wouldn't be here. We also want to thank those who donated this week, Chris and Monique, and especially Byron, who really stepped up and knocked a home run out of the park for contending for the faith. We really appreciate you, Byron. We love you, and we thank you for your support and your faithfulness over the years. You've been a longtime supporter, and we just want to acknowledge you and thank you for all that you have done for this ministry. But we need the rest of you to step up as well. We can't just rely on Byron and a few other people. We need all of you to be consistent in giving to contending for the faith. We're not out of the woods yet, and we still need to take care of a debt of $2,600, so we need your help. We need your prayers, especially and we need also your your uh, financial giving. This is a listener-supported ministry, and we need your support. It is so important for you to to remember that that uh, it costs us four hundred a week to be on the air, and we just need your help. We, Doctor Buckner and I, don't take a single uh, dime from all the the donations that are given to this ministry. Everything goes right back in to the airtime. It is just so critical for you to help us. So remember, you can reach us at contending for the faith p.o box 553 tiburon california that's contending for the faith p.o box 553 tiburon is spelled t-i-b-u-r-o-n california 94920 you know if you enjoy contending for the faith if you're getting a lot out of the teaching and the conversation and if you're being blessed by everything that goes on in this ministry then we want you to step up and 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 continue to bless us with your giving and with your prayers otherwise you may 
anyway, tune in on a Saturday night and hear something different and strange. <laughs> it won't be us. And a lot of people were really disappointed, you know, years ago when we had to leave the air. Uh, we don't want to have that happen again. We're believing God wants us on the air and wants us to do what we've been doing and continue to minister and meet the needs of God's people throughout this Bay Area and beyond. And we just want to let you know that uh, in, for the next two weeks, uh, first of all, next week we're going to be celebrating and Dr. Buckner is going to be um, 50 years old. <laughs> <laughs> You, you weren't speaking in tongues, were you? <laughs> you need, I think you might, I don't want to you say you need You have the gift of interpretation? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good there. <laughs> and, and everybody heard it in their own language. <laughs> but he's going to be celebrating a birthday, and I'm not going to repeat that number. Uh, <laughs> and so next week, we will not be on the air for the next two weeks, actually. I'm going to have his, his, his birthday and anniversary uh, to Nancy, his lovely wife. How many years will it be? 41 years. 41. Woo-hoo. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Now, Amen. You, now, you're going to have a lot of people calling in tonight. They're going to say, Dr. Buckner, can you give me an interpretation of what Gary said? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I just celebrated last week was our 32nd anniversary. So we're, we're trailing behind you. But we, we got some 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 ne- some numbers there. Amen. We're in double digits, too. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> you know, but we just want to let the listening audience know that we'll have the best of contending for the faith. So tune in. Uh, even though we won't be live, we will still be on the air and you will uh, get the benefit of that teaching. So important. You know, if you have friends and relatives and people you know that uh, need to hear this type of teaching, that need to be aware of the armor of God, that need to know uh, the scripture and be able to, for themselves, give an answer for themselves to be able to contend for the faith is as Paul, as Jude wrote in Jude 1 and 3, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. That means to put up a good fight. Earnestly contend. That means you're going in the ring and you're going to come out the champion. They're going to put the belt around your waist when it's all said and done to contend for the faith. We contend with a, for a lot of things, but how much time do we spend preparing to contend for the faith, the very word of God, our faith he's given us, that we should be able to give reasons and answers for that faith. So we encourage you tonight. Tell your friends to tune in. Tell your relatives, your pastors. You know, this is a program that could benefit so many pastors out there. How many of them understand uh all these types of biblical truths, how many understand even the the doctrine of the Trinity correctly? You know, we're so always amazed at what people don't know. It's just shocking at times. We live in a in an age where uh, 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 the the culture around us has no concept of of godly things, and so it's so important that you tune in so that you know that you're receiving uh, the, the, the type of teaching that is going to equip you to be able to give reasons and answers, you know, to be equipped for life. Like we always say, if you're not equipped, you can expect to be whipped because the enemy is taking no prisoners. He's here to steal, kill and destroy. Well, let me get off my soapbox <laughs> and uh, get back to the doctor here. Hey, man, thank you so much, Gary. Everything you said in the Lord is so uh touching and moving. And we do, again, want to thank everybody out there who have contributed to Contending for the Faith with your support. We got some faithful people out there that we've listed, and they are a core group of people that are faithful. And But we need more people because, as Brother Gary said, we have $2,600 still to go. And even though we won't be in the studio for a couple of weeks, we want people to still step up because you'll be hearing the best of Contending for the Faith. And we can't be here all the time, but when we're not here. We try to bring the best to you so that you can get blessed. And so uh, continue to pray for us and support us and uh, be blessed. And, and as Brother Gary said, we are one of a kind. We are very unique. 
uh, in the Lord, in this ministry, what we do. And so continue to uh, pray for us and uh, lift us up in the Lord, and we will do likewise. And again, uh, thank you so much in the Lord for all that uh, you have done for this ministry. Brother Gary, let's go to some of our callers. All right, we're going to go to Brother Cece, brother, better known as Ricky, or Ricky, better known as Cece. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, my brother? How you doing this evening? Um, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. How you guys doing? All right. Well, we're truly blessed and highly favored in the Lord. He is good and Amen. worthy to be praised. Yeah, I just want to say before you know, before you get into it, I always have to comment on the teaching. I really enjoyed it. Um, I actually, I actually wrote down all these scriptures. I never, I never noticed that the word walk was so much. I never noticed that word, word walk was in uh, Ephesians so much, and it really just an eye open. I was like, wow! So I really um, enjoyed that teaching, and then even how you, um, you know, say how important our walk is, you know, because I, I, I know some people, you know, I'm not going to name names, but I know just the different Christians in general. A lot of times, you know, who, you know, I think as you were speaking it, our, our lifestyle has to be consistent with our profession and I think that's that's what I you know is, is good. And um I like how you tied it in with the with the armor again. I mean it was, it was just it was, it was just good, you know, and I just I just really enjoyed it. So I, I have to comment on it before I before I get into what I want to have. So Well I thank to, you so I, much. I, I, we I, always get blessed by your comments and your encouraging words and and just to add to what you're saying is that a lot of us talk it but we don't walk it. We need to talk it and walk it. So uh, thank you so much for your encouraging words. And I know you have a good question on your heart tonight. Yeah, I have a question. Um, it's in Ezekiel chapter 3. Um, yeah, Ezekiel chapter 3. I want to ask you a question. And then, of course, get some prayer. And I'll be, I'll be as minimal as possible because I know it's a lot of other colors that probably want to get through. But I want to read this in Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 1. And I'll just read the first couple of verses and then... Um, I'll uh, and ask you, you know, your observ- uh, I'll give you my observation on it. It's um, Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 1, where it says, Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, eat what you find, eat this scroll, and go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he called me to eat the scroll. And he said to me, Son of man, feed your belly and fill your stomach with this scroll that I give you. So I ate it, and it was in my mouth like honey and sweetness. Then he said to me, Son of man, go to the house of Israel and speak with my word, speak my word to them, excuse me, for you are not sent to a people of an unfamiliar speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Thus is the reading of God's word. And I just wanted to um, get your comment on that, on, on that particular verse. Well, that's a good uh, question. Basically, in a nutshell, uh, you know, uh, we uh, first and foremost, we can't take everything literal and uh, because the Bible is in some places literal, symbolic and figurative and and have a lot of metaphors, especially Ezekiel and Daniel and as well as the book of Revelation. So when he says to eat the word, he's not saying to get the Bible and then be like the cookie monster and uh, grab it and start uh, chopping it, you know, chopping it to pieces and eating it up. He's basically saying, take the word and internalize it in your heart. And then when he talks about bittersweet, uh, this is something that even uh, he speaks of in relationship to uh, John, the Johannian, not the Johannian gospel, but the book of Revelation. And so you have a similar uh, experience there. And he talks about bittersweet in Revelation 10 and verses 9 and 10. So when he uses the word bitter, what he's saying there is that when you digest the word of God, my message to the house of Israel, I want you to be prepared, Ezekiel, that uh, some of it is going to be sweet because the word of God is sweet. (laughs) The word of God is sweet when you preach it. But when you see the judgment of God come upon the nation, it's going to be bitter to you. So uh, it kind of fits into what uh, we preach and teach on that. I mean, a lot of people love to hear about the love of God. But when you start talking about the judgment of God, oh, you get people stirred up because the love of God is sweet, but the judgment of God is bitter. And especially when you start preaching on hell, people today don't want to hear the word hell, right? They 
want to hear about this universal gospel that everybody uh, is going to be going to heaven and that sort of thing. And Jesus said, you know, many are called, but few are chosen. And, you know, broad is the way and that leads to destruction. And so uh, hell is a reality and that a lot of people are going to go there because uh, God is not going to allow them into heaven and make it miserable for all of us who love him. I mean, I think it was C.S. Lewis once said this, the Oxford scholar once said, God is, has two wills. And the first will is your will be done. And then the other one is my will be done. And so when people stand before him, God will say, this was your will. Now your will be done and go, they're going to go straight to hell. And then God is going to say, my will be done. And all those are going to go to heaven. The interesting thing about Jesus, I was saying this in the church the other day, and people got blessed by it. In a courtroom, in a courtroom, you generally have um, a defense attorney and you have oftentimes a mediator and you also have a prosecuting attorney. So they argue on behalf of the person and trying to build the best case around the situation. I know a lot about that because I sometimes go and help out people who are in trouble and pray for them like a chaplain. But the reality is when we stand before Jesus, he's going to be <laughs> the uh, prosecutor, the defense attorney and the mediator. So it's not going to be no, oh, Lord. You know, I got to have a defense attorney to defend me because you're the prosecutor. No, Jesus is going to say, no, uh, you know, just be gone. There's not going to be no ands, ifs, and buts. And that's going to be bitter to a lot of people. But yet those who are following Jesus is going to be so sweet. There's going to be a sweet smelling aroma that will go up to the throne of God because they followed him and it's going to be sweet, but it's going to be real bitter. And our message today, when we preach about the, the love of God is so sweet. But when we talk about the judgment of God, nobody wants to hear it, especially they don't want to hear about hell. It's bitter. It's real bitter. But yet we got to preach it, got to teach it. Because Jesus preached more on hell than he did on heaven. That's the bottom line. All right. So praise the Lord. Hopefully that helped you out. Yeah, so that helped out a lot. And then I just um I just wanna get um to three three pray three prayer requests and then the last two is pretty serious and so I'll keep it brief. Just for me, I wanna get prayer for wisdom and uh peace of mind and of course my health and then I just wanna pray for all my friends and family members for um a fiery hedge of protection around him because, you know, it's Saturday night and you know how that goes and so I just wanna pray for all my loved ones as well as my friends and our families to be protected. And then I wanna pray for Martin Lawrence, you know, the the uh comedian Martin Lawrence, the actor, um He's going through a divorce right now, and um, he's on suicide watch. And so I want to pray for him, you know, because um, I've been real concerned about him, you know, he's, and I know that it has to be tough right now. He, they're worried he's going to kill himself, and so they're on watch for him. So I just want to pray that the Lord will put his hand on this man and that he would come to know who Christ is. And then also I want to pray for Bobby Christina. Bobby, um, when he's using his daughter, um, she's still on the binge of drugs and alcohol, and, I, and um, they're worried about her, too. So I think he, you know, they, these are some very serious requests, and I want to pray for them. And anyone else out there uh, could join in with us right now would be ready, very, you know. Well, helpful. thank you so much. And uh, we only have about a um, minute left to go. Uh, Why don't we pray but, when we get back? Yeah, we'll, we'll pray. pray when we get back. And uh, you hold on, then we are uh, going to get to Jermaine as well. So hang in there, Jermaine. Well, it's time for us to take that commercial break. Our phone lines are open. You can give us a call. The number is 1-888-F-O-R-K-F-A-X. That's one 367 5329 Don't be shy. Pick that phone up. And let us know what's on your mind. Give us a call. We want to hear from you tonight. Again, the number is 1-888-F-O-R-K-F-A-X. We'll be right back with more of Contending for the Faith. Listening to Contending for the Faith on AM 1100 KFAX, the Spirit of the Bay. If you have questions about your faith in Christ, theology, doctrine, or the cults, call us now 
888-FOR-KFAX. That's 888-367-5329. Welcome back to Contending for the Faith with your host, Bay Area Pastor, Lecture Counselor, and Expert on the Cults, Dr. Jerry L. Buckner. I'm Gary Bell. Once again, our phone lines are open. Give us a call. That number is 1-888-F-O-R-K-F-A-X. Again, the number is 1-888-367-5329. Don't be shy. Pick up that phone and give us a call. You still have a few minutes left in the broadcast. We can still get you in. We just want to thank everyone who has been praying for contending for the faith. You know, we believe the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much, and your prayers have availed tremendously. And so we just want to thank you for your prayers, and we, we wholeheartedly just want to admonish you to keep it up. Keep praying for this ministry. Also, we want to thank those who stepped up this week and uh, were, were able to give um, generously to our ministry. It's so important that uh, during this time, especially as we are rounding the curve towards summertime and people want to take vacations and they often leave and forget about any commitments that they've had for our as radio ministries and such. And it's, it's so vital that you remember contending for the faith, that you remember that we are listener support, that you remember that we need your prayers as well as your financial support to remain on the air. It is so vital. We still have a $2,600 debt that we need to retire. And we just thank those of you who stepped up this week, uh, Chris and and Monique, and especially Byron, who really came forward and, and hit a home run for us. But we need the rest of you to do the same and to do it consistently so that we can remain on the air doing what God has called us to do. You can reach us at Contending for the Faith, Post Office Box 553, Tiburon, California. It's spelled T-I-B-U-R-O-N, California, 94920. That's Contending for the Faith. Post Office Box 553, Tiburon. It's spelled T-I-B-U-R-O-N, California, 94920. Dr. Buckner. Thank you, Brother Gary, for those important announcements. And uh, we were talking with uh, CC, uh, Brother Ricky, and he had requested some prayer requests. And what we're going to do right now is go to to those prayer requests. You still there, Brother Ricky? Yes, yes. All righty. Yes. Well, Brother Gary uh, is going to lead us in prayer on this, and uh, we're going to ask people, as you indicated, to join in with us on these uh, prayer requests. All right, Lord, we just thank you for Brother Ricky's consistency. We thank you for his walk, Lord God, because week after week, he he he's transparent with his walk, and he calls in, and he he shares, and he asks very important questions that, that benefit not only him, but the rest of the listening audience. So we thank you for his walk. We pray for that he would have wisdom and good health, Lord God. We lift up his friends and his family, that you put a hedge of protection and wall fire around them. And Lord God, we also lift up Martin Lawrence and uh, Bobby Christine, and we just pray that that uh, you would just clear their minds, Lord God, that you would surround them with people, godly people who will who will be able to speak life into their lives, who will to to share you, Lord Jesus, with them, to convict them, Lord God, of sin and righteousness, to help them to understand that they don't have to to struggle and go through these challenges alone, but that they do, they do have an advocate, that they do have a savior who loves them and is waiting for them to turn toward him. Lord God, we just pray you touch their hearts and soften those hearts, Lord God, that they would come to a place of salvation. Lord, we thank you and praise you and give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Brother Cece, uh, thank you so much for your call and your uh, prayer requests, as well as your uh, always good questions. And God bless you. Keep us in prayer. And Brother Rick is going to talk to you about a few things. And um Touch base with him over some things. We share some things with him to share with you. So God bless you, and thank you for your call. All right, let's go to Jermaine, and he's been so patiently wait, waiting for us. Jermaine, thank you for holding. How are you right. tonight? Oh, I'm doing very well. Well, good, my brother, and uh, we appreciate your call tonight. And uh, how's you been doing in your family? Well, you know what? We're doing very well. You know, the guy's been uh, faithful just like he said he would, and I had a lot of responsibilities on my shoulders and my father passed away it's been about a month now and just uh, a lot of amazing things have happened you know in the midst of uh supposed tragedy you know we were so able to give glory to the lord so amen uh, i'm doing well well that's good to hear and uh, i receive your calls every now and then to give me a report on how things are going and i'm so 
uh, blessed to hear the good word uh, coming from you tonight. And uh, what's on your heart tonight? Well, you know, actually, uh, that's what I was calling about. I, I had some experiences that I, I was uh, kind of curious about. Uh, the night of my father's, uh, he became ill with a stroke on a, a Tuesday morning. I I woke after a few hours of sleep, maybe two in the morning, and I, uh, you know, just kind of felt inspired to start getting dressed, and, and I did, and I went to have some food, and I was listening to a sermon, and I uh, recall preachers of the past, you know, they would pray for people in the middle of the night, and, you know, I'll be honest, uh, the words out of my mouth was that they're crazy, it's 2.30 in the morning, but after I went to check on my wife and my daughter who were ill in another room, I, I decided to go ahead and, and uh, start praying. And just as I was, uh, you know, approaching my room, I saw my phone go off, and it was, uh, you know, my mother and father, or my mother letting me know my father had just taken ill. And it was pretty much from then on just amazing things happened. My uh, my wife asked me what was going on. I said, well, I think my dad's dying. My mother's sugarcoating something. And my daughter woke up from a dead sleep and asked me if her grandpa was gone. And I, uh, you know, asked her, what did she say? And she repeated that. And, you know, I just told her to go ahead and go back to sleep. We don't know anything yet. But, it, you know, after that, I, I started just praying for my father just for a little more time, which, which God did grant. Uh, the doctors were amazed. He lasted as long as he did in relative comfort after starting off in pain. But, I, I was just curious about, I remember Jesus saying something about the Holy Spirit being uh, there to comfort you when he was gone, and I was just wondering if what I experienced were, were uh, was evidence of the Holy Spirit being there in the house, because I, I don't believe in some of these people who claim to be psychic or claim to be talking to the dead or, or uh, whatever witchcraft that they're into, but I know the experience I had, and it was unique, but it wasn't like, what they describe. So I was wondering if you can give me any insights on that. Well, I appreciate that. You know, you're sharing your story with us and stuff like that. Um, uh, I can tell you this, that um, in my own experiences, that the times that God works with me is early in the morning. That's when I get the greatest uh, inspiration of the Holy Spirit working in my heart the preparation of sermons and a lot of other things when it's quiet and when it's still and the Holy Spirit always has a way of working with me. And then I've had other people testify of the same thing. So uh, I believe that you're right on target of what you're saying. <clears throat> There's not too much that I can add to that other than the fact that uh, Jesus made it very clear uh, in his word that uh, the Holy Spirit uh, would uh, come, and he talks about this in John 16. And let me kind of read some uh, verses to you uh, here. In John 16, uh, let me read uh, to you, uh, let's so you see, starting off with uh, verse 6. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts so you had sorrow that had filled your heart. And, uh, and he's speaking of that to them <clears throat> because around your father. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helpers. So Holy Spirit came to be help to you at this time of need will come to you. But if I depart... I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and judgment and of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my father and then, and, and you will see me no more. So, and then he goes on to say in, in down in verse 13, uh, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. So the Holy Spirit's work is to not only help you, uh, but Jesus says to help you in your time of sorrow. And that's what your family has been going through. And then also, too, uh, he is his job is to be an intercessor. So you read sometime Romans chapter eight and you'll find that uh, he helps us to pray when we don't know how to pray. And he 
uh, takes us through that too. So yes, he is a comforter right there and he comes at the time of sorrow and he gives us the spirit of ministry at those times of uh, various needs. Gary, you like to add to this as well? You know, you know, I would just say that God is a God of all comfort and you being his child, he's going to give you that comfort as you as he's as you need it. And he knew what was going to take place in your father's life. And he knew, you know, that uh, it was a time for you to be awake and aware and and to uh, be ready to pray. So, you know, God works all things together according to scripture, to those that are called according to his purposes. And I believe that. And I believe that God is sensitive to all the stuff that we go through. I remember a time um, back in the 80s when my grandfather had terminal cancer. Um, program that I was working for lost its funding. And uh, it was during that time uh, my grandfather was getting pretty weak. And so he would call me every day and have me to come over and you know he was frail and he needed help getting in and out of the shower and getting this shower and stuff and so I was there helping him and you know in part of my mind I'm thinking hmm I need to be looking for a job you know? <laughs> uh, but you know uh, my wife was still working fortunately but you know how it is you think you should be you know looking for work when you're not having a job and but at the same time he he needed me and I'll never forget that um couple of weeks went by and um, next thing I know, I got a call from the job, my old job and said, we got the funding, come on back to work, right? And uh, another week passed and then I got the call that, that my grandfather had passed away. And so, you know, it was the Lord who gave me that time to be with him, you know, during those last few weeks to be able to be a, a blessing to him and a comfort to him and to, have that time and Dr. Buckner had the opportunity to come over and pray with him it was a really a, an amazing time because he was really weak and frail but when he heard that prayer he just about leaped out of his seat <laughs> and uh, it was just an amazing thing that if I had not you know if I'd been stuck at work would never experience and so God released me from work to uh, to be able to have that those last days and that those last hours with my grandfather and i you know i believe that was all orchestrated by him amen and just one more uh we have about three more minutes but let me just add uh, one other scripture thank you so much gary uh, very encouraging words you may may want to also look at uh psalms 23 mm-hmm. and because it's very uh comforting um you know chapter there and it talks about the Lord is my shepherd, so he is your shepherd. And Jesus talks about that, uh, that he's the great shepherd, the good shepherd also in, in John 10. And he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Uh, he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that is quite interesting, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And he says here, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So comfort you. And so he comforts you. And the times that he loves to comfort us is not only in the daytime and the nighttime, but it seems like the Lord does his greatest work in the weary hours of the morning and the night when you're laying your head on the pillow and you're crying. And it just has, a, you see the great work of God comforting at those times. So that's a good encouraging scripture with you too at this time. All right. And, uh, you know, just uh, speak a little bit of what you said. Uh, I was thinking of Isaiah 55, uh, I think it's eight or nine where he's talking about his ways being different from ours. My a quick side note: my my favorite truck I parked outside my father's house was was destroyed while I was at my father's deathbed, and because of the way it was destroyed, it blocked my mother's path from leaving, which was good because she wasn't in any mood to drive, and uh, it also became an answer to a, a prayer as I've been praying all year because they, you know, they I can't mention the number for the contract reasons, but they gave me much more than it was worth. Well, praise the Lord, brother. We just appreciate you, Jermaine. Unfortunately, we have to go, but God bless and keep in contact with us. 
Thank you so much for your call, Brother well, Gary. Well, we've come to the end of tonight's exciting broadcast, and we'd like to thank Jarrell, our engineer, Rick, our phone counselor, and you, our listeners.